Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a bit of a different video. I'm basically going to be talking about my ex-friend stalker, what led to her being so obsessed and start stalking to me, I mean stalking me, how I met her, all that kind of stuff. It is a little bit warm where I live, so if I'm shaking my shirt, you'll know why. This is going to be a bit of a long story, so get some water, get some food, and just watch the video, but... I basically met my stalker when I was nine. I actually met her from my oldest brother because they actually were in the same class together. They went to high school together. They graduated together. That's basically how I met her. The friendship was really good at first. There was no indications or like warning signs that she was like an obsessive person or that she would like try like stalking someone. So. I really had no warning signs there, thought she was great, she was like an older sister because I grew up with two older brothers and I'm the youngest of three and when I was like eight, nine, I kind of wanted a little sister but my parents were done having kids after me so she was kind of like, I saw her as a, like a big sister figure at the time. Um, we really did not hang out that much, she would call sometimes. I would say when I was about 13, 14, we would hang out a few times and not a lot, but a few times we would and then it would just be mostly phone calls and I think this is where the obsession started because she would call like up to like 55 times a day. I had to tell her to stop calling so much because I was doing stuff, I was in the middle of something you know, all that stuff, and when she didn't, like, she kind of listened to me, but she kind of didn't, because she would still be doing the same thing, and my mom, she was getting really annoyed, I was also getting really annoyed, because I was trying to do something, I was trying to eat lunch or dinner or whatever, and she would just call, and my mom basically had to tell her to stop calling so much as well, because we were in the middle of something, or doing something, and on top of that, it was probably ranking up the phone bill, like, Imagine getting so many phone calls in one day. I'm sure it would um, rank up the phone bill, obviously. And then, um, yeah, it would be mostly phone calls. And then once I hit 18, 19, we would start hanging out a bit more. Actually, we started hanging out more persistently. Because I was an adult and she was an adult. And a few couple years age difference like she was around the same age as my oldest brother but like a couple months older so you know it wasn't that bad of an age difference and I think this is also when she started becoming like yeah, this is also when she started becoming controlling when I was like 18 19 because a lot of the times I used to do background acting when I was like 19 to like almost 21, maybe like yeah, around a year and a half-ish, so a lot of times she expected me to hang out with her, like draw plans to come hang out with her, like she was just controlling in that way because she want, just wanted to hang out more, but a lot of times I had to do like background work. I couldn't always hang out with her. I told her that. I thought she understand. I think she understood that, but I don't think she fully understood that. I'm not too sure. Um, I know I say um a lot. I'm saying um a lot. That's part of my anxiety. Why was I late enough? She wanted to hang out more. A lot of times I couldn't because I was doing background acting for quite some time before I stopped. And I think that was also her way of keeping tabs on what I was doing. And a lot of times she would call my house to like hang out, see if I was home, that kind of stuff. Could never really get away from the phone calls because she would be calling so much. And then once I turned 20, I finally got my own... I had a flip phone before I turned 20, but it was my grandma's old phone that I took after my grandma passed away and it stopped working. It died on me basically. So when I was 20, I got my very first Samsung phone. And when I got my 
first full number, um, it was great because, like, I wasn't worried. I was kind of worried about her calling a lot of my cell number, but I kind of wasn't. But at the same time, she stopped calling the home phone because she knew I had a cell phone number. So that was really, I think that was much more better on my mom because it was making her happier that the phone wasn't calling. I mean, um, that the phone wasn't going off every hour or like every half an hour, every 20 minutes, all that kind of stuff. And what else? Yeah, there had been a couple of times where she had came over to my house, but you know, she never remembered where I lived. Like I would always have to go and meet her and like, I'd have to meet her at a bus stop near my house and then walk back to my house for a twist point. It was only like five, seven minutes top. So it was really close and I'm a naturally fast walker anyway. So I could like meet her there very quickly, but she could never really remember where my house was, which is funny. So that tells me that she didn't do well with directions or like remembering where someone lived, that kind of thing. So. Um, yeah, and then the following year, when I was like, no, wait, not the following year, but the same year, I had also met a couple of friends of hers. I thought she was, I thought her friends were great. I thought they were nice people at first, and eventually I started hanging out with some other people that her friends did not approve of. Or like one particular friend of hers did not approve of he's this person started getting really mean really nasty um if he found out that I was hanging out with someone else that wasn't her friends or her and he'd basic or this person would just get nasty for no reason basically and one time he got so nasty to the or this person got nasty one time so nasty to the point where I didn't even want to be around him and it's like I just like walked away from where I was I'm like I'm not gonna put up with this and like I'm starting to see a side to your friend that I don't like so I could tell her friend was also very controlling of people and I really did not want to be around um, someone that was even more like she wasn't super controlling but this friend of hers was like really really controlling like ugh, I did not want to be around someone like that so it got to the point where um, her and this friend, they were trying to, they didn't want me being friends with certain people. And then it's as if they were trying to pick my friends for me, but that really was not their decision. So I'm an adult. I can choose who my friends are, who I date, um, who I hang out with, who I live with, that kind of stuff. Um, they really burned this person wasn't really approving and accepting of that and i was just getting um i was getting so mad i was even mad at her cause she was even on her friend's side of um trying to control who i was being friends with and who i was hanging out with i was so mad i no longer and that's basically where I ended the friendship with her. I no longer wanted anything to do with her because I did not want to be friends with someone who's controlling, who wants to pick friends for me, picks who I hang out with, picks what I do, or that kind of thing. So I just basically ended the friendship, like I said. And I also stopped talking to a friend that I did no longer like along with her other friends like um i stopped talking to her other friends as well i blocked her i blocked her from i blocked basically all of her friends because i did not because they're the type of people where they come up and talk to you and if you tell them something about what's going on with you and like this and that they'll basically like report it back to her like tell her about it and like oh jackie did this jackie did that and um yeah i really did not want to i really did not want to be around someone 
or be friends with someone or talk to someone that would like report stuff back to her about me um so i basically just stopped having anything to do with her friends as well basically blocked them blocked her um then i got to the point because i blocked her on my phone she would try leaving voicemails and every time she left a voicemail it was really a stupid voicemail like stupid voicemails when i look back on it now the voicemail sounded i don't remember what she said exactly but it sounded like she was like mentally immature because in the voicemails she was acting like she was in middle school and high school kind of thing and she's like 30 years old now i'm 24 now but she would basically act like a 12 year old in high school looking for girl girl and girl drama or girl and girl competition that's basically the best way i can describe um how she was acting in these voicemails which is like really stupid um and ridiculous and half the time i didn't even listen to these voicemails so i just did not i was kind of listening to it but i kind of wasn't because i just didn't want to hear it so i would like delete them every time and she only left voicemails because i had already blocked her number i had to block her on facebook like 10 to 15 times and on instagram 10 to 15 times in a two and a half year span after befriending her um yeah i remember one time i was in ontario with my mom because my grandpa my mom's dad was back or was um from there originally and she ended up calling me when i was there i was there for like two weeks she called within like the eighth day of my trip back there because i was there for almost two weeks but she called on the eighth day left a really stupid voicemail i just deleted it um didn't want anything to do with her basically and but yeah like i was saying that she left a really stupid voicemail when i was in ontario and i deleted it one she had nothing to do with her and when i deleted these voicemails it was my way of telling her i want nothing to do with you just like if you block someone it should give them a message of saying we're not friends i want nothing to do with you that kind of thing leave me alone but some people just did not get it some people just don't get it and i don't think she fully got that because again she is like mentally immature so i don't think she really understood that um I no longer had interest in being her friend anymore and like having a friendship with her so um when I came to social media she would try contacting me on there <sighs> she would try contacting my mom I'm surprised she didn't try contacting my other brother because he was also on social media but luckily I don't think he ever received any messages from her asking about me so Thank goodness for that, but she did try to contact my mom once or twice to see what I was up to, but I just basically blocked her accounts on my mom's social media as well. That way, um, she could, she couldn't contact my mom either, and yeah, the last contact I had with her was like... It was like September of last year. It was just like three or four weeks before Thanksgiving. She basically wanted to talk. I'm like, um, no, we don't. We're not friends anymore. I basically told her not to contact me again. And it's funny because I haven't heard anything since then. And I hope it stays that way. But because she's so mentally immature and does not leave people alone, like she'll kind of provoke her boundaries to see to see what ticks you off, what makes you mad, what makes you upset kind of thing. Like, she just does not know how to back off or like leave people alone. Um, so thankfully I haven't heard anything from her since. Hopefully it stays that way. It has been quiet ever since that happened. I'm still monitoring accounts on social media 
to see if maybe they look like hers and that way if they are her I can block her. Uh, luckily it has not gone to the point she's not a threatening person but she never has been but luckily it's go never gone to the point where she like physically threatened me. I bet she would ugh. I bet she wouldn't show up at my house because she again she always forgot where I lived. I always had to go meet to bring her to my house because she never remembered where I lived but um If she ever were to show up here, I would. If she were ever to show up at my house, I would just basically call the cops, especially since we have a security camera in our French yard, captures a lot of what happens. So if I saw her or if I saw her pop up at my house on camera, I'd basically like just call the cops and have them usher her away and like explain the situation. But, um,. I doubt that she would show up here because again she never remembered where I lived she's like really horrible with directions so yeah it's been quiet for a while I'm hoping that she doesn't start up the drama again or like try to create another account to try adding me or like following me so that's just kind of like creepy and it is weird to me that it is weird to me that a woman can easily stalk another woman, but on top of that, I was all I was thinking about this a while back when um a few months after I last had contact with her, I was wondering if maybe she was like bisexual or maybe if she was just like jealous because she just kind of seemed like the jealous type just because I'm slimmer and she's more like really heavy built and um maybe she's jealous of something I had or like the way I was or something I'm not too sure but <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised whoops I wouldn't be surprised if she was actually bisexual even though she's like into men and has dated men but still you never know um I just hope that she finally realized that I no longer wanted a friendship with her and that she has basically completely broken my trust or like um, lost my trust and the thought of being friends again is something that she'll never be able to get back because of like how things went downhill and how um how controlling she was being you know so I'm hoping that she's got that message that she no longer wants to be friends with you like just leave her alone like go bug someone else that kind of thing you know so um what else was there Oops. I had a thought, but then I lost it. This happens a lot when I have to think about stuff. Um, I think she also really enjoys bugging other people. And like almost her to the point of harassing them because she's caused issues with other women to the point where they stop talking to her and stop being friends with her. And I know one time a friend, a former friend of mine told me that she was basically causing issues with another woman and the other woman basically beat her up or causing trouble. So I don't know if she said something to tick her off or what she did, but she must have had it coming to get beaten up like that. Um, I don't know the extent of how badly she got beaten up, but I honestly don't care because, again, um, she does not really have boundaries and she'll do anything that she can to provoke um, people's personal space and see what ticks them off, what makes them mad, what makes them upset kind of thing. So, um, I don't think she'll ever fully stop, but... 
hopefully there's a good chance I might be moving from where I'm living in a short while. I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, yeah, I don't think she'll ever fully stop. I think she just enjoys like bugging the crap out of people and acting like she's still in high school like a giddy schoolgirl, or like a little kid that will do anything to bug anyone so um yeah i guess only time will tell you know again i have not heard from her since a few weeks before thanksgiving of last year so i think that's a good sign she does live in the same town or the same city as me but she lives on the other side of town, so I have space where I don't live close to her, but still can keep somewhat of a distance from her. Um, there's been a few times, there's been a few times where I thought I've seen her at the store, but other than that, nothing crazy has happened. She did not like call me and be like, oh, I saw you at the store and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So, um, I just hope she realizes what she's doing or that, um, constantly like stalking someone online or like on phone or like constantly bugging someone's not okay. And that if she continues doing what she's doing, that someone is probably gonna do the same thing back to her or like take it more seriously to the point where someone could easily get the police involved and get a restraining order. Because I do watch a show, a podcast show on Strictly Stalking. It's called Strictly Stalking, but a lot of the stalking okay. victims have had to get a restraining order against their stalkers um, just because they cannot control it all on their own when they thought they could but then they had to get the police involved so thankfully that has not been my case so far but if I'm not gonna be living in the house I'm living in much longer and move elsewhere like move into another house elsewhere then I'm not really too concerned about it um, Again, I don't think she'll ever fully stop the online cyber stalking or like being a pain in the butt kind of thing or being a bug. But again, um, someone is seriously gonna probably, someone is seriously probably gonna get a restraining order against her if she does the same thing as someone else. So I hope she realizes um what she does to people is not okay it's almost like torment and like enjoying what what reactions she gets from them but i hope she does realize that someone's gonna get a restraining order against her if she does not stop bothering people or like harassing them or stalking them online or on phone or in person because i've seen her harass people in person before too but they were able to like stand up to her and give her crap because of it so um yeah but still i wouldn't be surprised if that was the case if someone did have to take out or does take out a restraining order against her eventually because she does not she's just not very good with boundaries personal space all this stuff um She's also spread a few rumors a couple times, which I really don't care, but I don't, I don't even want to hear about these stupid rumors that she would even try um, spreading. One, it does not mean anything to me, and I would not believe it either way, and I would not pay attention to it, so um, I think she doesn't always fully tell the truth, so can't really trust her with that and I know a friend that has a friend of hers that knows the family and they can tell that her and her family are just like really weird so um even my friend doesn't like her a lot of my friends don't like her except like 
the issues and the drama she tries to cause with other people. Not just, not only has she tried to cause issues with me, but other people as well. So, um, yeah, my friends just don't really care for her that much. Um, or like her that much. Especially the one that told me that her and her family are, like, weird. She does not like her that much at all. Um, my family doesn't like her anymore at all so um it just shows what kind of person she really is with the stuff that she's done you know sorry if i've been saying um a lot throughout this that's just part of my anxiety disorder but i recommend watching kathleen Beatty. she's like a safety chick and she was stalked for like eight to ten years before her stalker finally backed off. You can Google her name on YouTube. Just type in Kathleen Beatty or like the safety chick and um, or type in strictly stalking on YouTube because I have a podcast of what I mean of episodes of talking with other stalking victims or stalking survivors and it's actually quite interesting. I've watched quite a few of them and I found a lot of them similar to my stalking situation so i definitely recommend watching that um i think it's very important to take stalking seriously and not to write it off as being a big deal because a lot of times it is a big deal to the point where someone can get seriously injured or killed or like they have to relocate they have to quit their job they have to move somewhere so um they had to get restraining orders all that kind of stuff so i would just say educate yourself on stalking as much as you can look up the different types of stalking as well because then you'll know the difference you'll know the difference of the different types of stalking and you'll know what to look for if you are in a similar situation I honestly wish when I was younger I would have educated myself more on stalking but when I was going to school it wasn't really mandatory to know about that kind of stuff so I really just didn't know much about it. Um, I actually did not start getting into like stalking research until I got stalked by a homeless guy on a bike a few years back and that was kind of traumatic for me, but I overcame that. have not seen the guy ever since, so that's been good. But, um, yeah, I've done my research ever since. I'm still doing my research on stalking and what to look out for. Stalking can be anything from phone calls to receiving messages online, having people like your posts, like, within hours, minutes, days, weeks of posting something, um, following you at the store, following you at work, that kind of thing, following you home. Um, so what else? There's also like breakup violence stalking, um, which is more of a common thing. So the fact that I was being stalked or cyber stalked by another woman is a bit of a more more of a different story compared to like breakup stalking it's like kind of weird though but again <clears throat> again just educate yourself do your research again in my case i was lucky enough where i wasn't getting threats or anything like that so i did not have to go to the police and get a restraining order but document document phone calls, um, possible profiles, um, social media accounts, social media messages, uh, just anything can make a big difference. Um, people are always saying document, 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 um, whether it's phone calls or social media messages, like I said, or like voicemails, like keep a log and that will show like collect enough evidence as you can that way if it gets serious or like really really bad you can take it to your local police and they can do something about it so 
that's what I recommend doing. I wish I would have done that a lot sooner when I was a lot younger, but again, I really did not know much about stocking back then. And again, it didn't get to the point where I had to go to the police because there was no threats involved. So I was really lucky on that, but document as much as you can. Watch Strictly Stalking. They definitely have some great tips on what you can do to build up your case if you or to build a case if you are being stalked and there's like a lot of advice and helpful tips from other stalking victims and stalking survivors. So I would really recommend checking out that show. I mean that podcast. Again it's on YouTube. I I've learned so much. <laughs> I've learned so much from that podcast that I watch every episode. Sometimes I go back. They also have like a website where you can listen to the podcast online. So just um watch that. I've learned so much about stalking and sometimes I rewatch episodes to go back and to see if one person's case is or one person's stalking situation is similar to mine or not. And if not, I go through more and more um, people's stories until I find something that is similar to mine. So yeah, I just recommend doing that, you know, keep yourself safe and learn whatever, learn as much as you can about stalking and how you can build a case against it. So. That's basically my ex-friend stalker story. I know it's a bit of a long story. Again, it goes back like 12 years, pl 12 years plus, because we were friends for 12 years, but the cyber stalking didn't stop until two years, two and a half years later. So like 14 years in total. So it is a long story as you can tell, but I am willing to share it and help anyone out there or like have my story out there that might help someone that's going in the, uh, help anyone out there and might be in a similar situation as I am. Cause a lot of times a lot of people are in a similar situation, but they're just not fully aware of it yet up until they see these kinds of things. So I hope this helps a lot of people out on what to look for stalking wise. Um, Look up signs of stalking too and types of stalking, like I said, because that will really give you a list of what stalking is and the type of stalking, and then you can compare it to whether or not it's happening to you. So, yeah, I hope this helps you guys out in some way. It might not be fully interesting of a video, but I hope that it does help someone out there that has been in the same situation that I've been in or help someone out yeah to help someone out if they are going through something like this or something that I went through or similar to what I went through so I'm pretty much gonna end this video here I rambled enough give this video a big thumbs up if you did like it share subscribe um share this video but yeah I'll see you guys next time bye guys